Hello everybody, welcome back to Luton. I'm Jason and if you've not watched this channel before, it's all about our journey to try and become self-sufficient in vegetables, eggs, maybe some honey later on, depending how we get on. If you have watched the channel before, welcome back. And today, what we're going to be doing today, well, I've got uh, some Munch 2 and climbing bean that need put in somewhere. And as I mentioned in previous videos, we're not really set up to even have an attempt at self-sufficiency this year. We've only got a small part of the vegetable plot available this year until we've uh, moved everything around and got rid of some sheds and got it laid out properly. So this year really is a practice just to see. We've never, never grown in this soil before until this year. And it's all a bit of a learning curve. I've been growing vegetables for 15 years, but we only moved here last year at the end of the season really so this summer this spring this summer is the first go at it but we are having some nice vegetables out the garden and it's great so we've got these uh, climbing bean that we've got to go in and these ones too i've two, got two rows of ones too out there already and i've got these dwarf bean that also I might leave those a few more days actually, maybe another week, just to let them get a little bit bigger. There are the roots. Oh, I don't know. Getting a few roots now. And we'll put them all in. So we'll put these dwarf bean in, the, the climbing bean, and the monster too. Now, while I'm here, I'll just show you what else I've got in it. So got in this tray. Can you see that? Let me turn that down a bit. So we have got cauliflowers coming on, spring onion and kale. We've got leeks growing in here, onion in here, cabbage there, parsnips in the dissolving cardboard pots. There's a small one just coming through. And we've got mixed salad leaves here, some spinach, and on this side, let me spin you around again. You can just about see through the frame, I think. On this side, we have got broccoli, sprouts, and rocket. Rocket coming on. There's one of the sprouts. And there's one of the broccoli. So obviously these are for a winter stroke spring harvest. And that's the reason that they're in the big pots because I want to keep them going until I've got some space to put them out when some of the summer stuff is finished. So let's get these uh, beans and mulch too in the ground, or a pot. I think some of them might have to go in a pot. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to deal with the climbing beans first. And I've only got four of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in this, this pot here. And put four canes in, in a cross formation so that the, the beans will hopefully hang on the higher parts, uh, making it much easier for me to collect them. So, that's what we'll do. Okay. So what I want to do is cane in each corner, but at quite a, quite a angle, if you like. That. These are eight foot canes. Okay. 
something like that and some string so this is uh, cotton string which if I was to leave it lying around in the garden by accident it would just rot away I don't like using nylon or plastic if I can help it now I'm using a plastic plant pot here I'm using plastic module trays you know I'm not saying I don't use plastic what I'm saying is if I can avoid it then I will so I've tied the string around two of the canes and all I'm going to do now is put a few wraps around it pulling it tight as I go and then I'm going to start going over and between the canes and pulling down tight and what that does is it really tightens a lot now this string wouldn't last well, probably won't last past the end of the summer to be honest but that's all I need it to do underneath as well and pull down tight on that Cable ties. I, I use cable ties. I use them at work. But when you cut them off and you drop the ends, they're not going to rot away. So When this is wet, this compost will hopefully get round these canes and hold them in a bit better and also the weight of the pot. As long as I put this in a fairly sheltered place, there shouldn't be enough wind loading to tip the pot, pot over as the, as the beans grow. Famous last words. Okay, so now what I want to do is Take out these beans. And as you can see, they're ready to go in the ground now. But a nice, young, healthy plant. These were sown at the beginning of June. And if I can keep the slugs off them and the pigeons, then uh, we should have some nice beans. I think these are French climbing beans. Now I'm going to plant them, I think, just to the inside and side of the canes. So sort of there, then there, then there, then there. Just plant them slightly deeper than they were. Developed roots, they need to get in the into some more space. firm down
Excellent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this into its living position and give it a water and move the camera further away so that you can see how this is set up. Okay, so as you can see, the canes cross over and the upper parts here, that's good. The beans will grow up here and hopefully the beans will hang down on the outside here as they grow. And that's gonna make life a lot easier when I'm trying to pick them. I accept if there's anything that grows down the bottom that might be a bit more tricky on the inside here, but this space is so short that hopefully nearly all of the, the beans will be here. And if these start to bend a bit with the weight, what I can do later on is tie, bind on some short canes between there and there and there and there, etc. And make a frame around this a bit higher up just to give them a bit more support. So I'm gonna leave that pot there for now. Um, if I need to move it at a later date, I can do. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get the Monge 2 in now. And as you can see, I've already got some here that are doing really well. I think they were sown, they were sown in May at some point, I can't remember exactly. And I've also got some more growing in front of the uh, Enviromesh enclosure there for the brassicas. So I think what I'm going to do is just add, add the few that I've got left between these ones, because these ones are spaced out quite far apart. They're probably 10 or 12 inches apart. So I think I'll space these ones between them, fill this row in, and hopefully I'll have kind of two different two different sowings um, cropping at different times in this this row here. Nice, healthy young plants. Really careful with the peas. Their stems are so so delicate that just trying to get them out of the module trays can be quite quite challenging. You can easily damage the stem. left. I think I'm going to put that one in front of this centre cane and that can grow up that. Get the grass out.
definitely ready to go in the ground look. I think I'll put the dwarf beans in this patch here, leaving me space to walk onto the bed to get to the munch two, those beans, that tomato. Just got to be careful that this rhubarb doesn't grow too much this way. But it'll be fine. Well, I have only got four, four of them as well. So. So all I've got to hope now is that the slugs don't get these before they get big enough to fend for themselves. That leaves some beetroot, multi-sown beetroot in this tray, but uh, they need to grow on a bit before I punt them out. If anyone could help me identify this rhubarb, I'd be uh, most grateful. I found it growing in the front garden when we moved in and I just we didn't want it there so I dug it up and plonked it down here and it's growing really well I've got no idea what variety it is so if I give you a few close-ups if anybody knows please let me know so there's the leaves sort of my hand full of arthritis but there's my hand uh, as a comparison and then down here a few close-ups so yeah if anybody knows what variety of rhubarb that is please let me know so I thought what we do now is just give you a quick wander around the veg that we've got growing. So we've got uh, various kinds of lettuce growing here and some herbs, supermarket herbs that I got from Aldi and they're doing all right, I've potted them on. They're recovering slowly. Um, sweet peppers growing in the pots then we've got loads of strawberries that i've taken from the runners off six plants i bought in b and q <coughs> excuse me <coughs> got some spring onion growing down here in trays and then this way we have carrots in a bucket there's none showing yet Still trying to get rid of this man flu. We've got potatoes in a pot sown around the beginning of June. Nothing showing yet. Then over here we've got money maker and cherry tomatoes. Got parsnips growing along there which was sown March <coughs> March time in the cardboard dissolvable pots and then planted out multi-sown beetroot uh, again sown in March tomatoes various uh, varieties along the fence all the way along here we've got some onions and I'm quite pleased with these, they're coming on now. Uh, considering the soil condition of first year growing in it, etc. I'm quite pleased. Some of them are starting to bulb up quite nicely. Got a, a row of carrots down there under the string that was sown a couple of weeks ago. And then over this side got two rows of carrots in there uh, we pulled one yesterday and they were quite they were okay not too bad 
forked. It did fork, but obviously hit a pebble or something. But they're fine. In here, we've got red onion, which hasn't done anywhere near as good as the white onion. Now, I don't know why, but they are growing and we can always eat them as small onions, spring onion type size. Cucumber growing and there is another one by the rhubarb as well. And then we've got some peppers. We've got mustard, obviously some nice lettuce growing there. The two onions at the end I am leaving to go to seed and save the seeds off those once they flower etc. And then over here I've got more Monge 2 growing along there and inside the enclosure I have my sprouts and calabrese which some have bolted and I need to get in there and sort that out. Still edible though, so that's all right. And then over here, we have main crop potatoes. These are King Edward. And I am going along and taking out the flowers. Uh, some people think it's worth it and some don't. I thought I'd try it. Taking out the flowers to make sure the plant focuses its energy on growing tubers, potatoes. So that's those. As you can see, the rest of the garden is quite, quite a mess. Um, old sheds and lumps of soil. And if you go back to some of the previous videos the introduction video etc that explains a lot more about how this plot is going to develop let's say into a 230-ish square meter um, back garden which is all dedicated to vegetables eggs chickens some outbuildings but within the area I'll have about 100 square meters pretty much smack on 100 square meters of growing space for vegetables so I'm really looking forward to getting it all sorted but it is going to take time and there'll be a polytunnel down the middle here and again I've started a, a playlist on how I'm going to build the polytunnel using a bought frame, a cheap bought frame, and then making the rest of it myself and buying a proper uh, polytunnel cover. So, but I'm more than happy for this year, our first year here. We've got some stuff growing, and that's the main thing. And uh, we'll build on it and build on it and build on it as we get the, the area developed and laid out properly so that we can try and become self-sufficient in vegetables. So I hope you've liked the video. If you have, please, please, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and then the bell icon as well so you don't miss any more updates as I put them out. I'm Jason, this is Leeton, the road to self-sufficiency. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.